you're not going to Demon Slayer to watch a story. You're going there to see Sakuga. I'm sorry. The story is not that. The story is okay. It's pretty good for Jonin. But like, Damn. why are we acting like it's the next biggest thing? I mean, it's the biggest thing, but come on. It's... I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a lot of hate, but the story is mid. <laughs> you use the word that should never be spoken to it. How dare you? <laughs> story is mid. Animation is the best. I think it's the one. Yeah, it's animation is the best. Hey, how's it going, everyone? And welcome back to the third episode of the Artcast podcast. My name is Didi Mark, and I'm here with my co-host. Third? Yes, third PHP. Thank you for saying your name. Um, <laughs> yeah. In this video, we're going to be talking about something that I find very interesting. And we're also going to be talking about something that's kind of fun, maybe more lighthearted, because we're currently recording right now at a very late time for both of us, and even more late for third. I'm pretty sure it's like, what, it's almost four? four over there third is that is yeah that it's 4 a.m and i haven't slept for 23 hours so let's get right into the uh <laughs> as we all know third is a bit of a lunatic he doesn't sleep but yeah mm -hmm. in today's episode we are going to be talking about being self-taught as an artist versus going to an art school now i will give a forewarning that we are still two clowns with microphones so do not take <laughs> anything that we <laughs> Do not take anything that we say very seriously, because at the end of the day, I believe Third and I are both self-taught, so neither of us went to art school. So we will be speaking clearly from our point of view and we'll offer any insights to the other side that we have based on our experiences with others. And, you know, what we've seen just, you know, being artists out here and stuff like that. Uh, also, I, I mean, I've had art classes before, so I can speak on that in terms of I'm sure it's not that different. You know, what about you, Third? Well, I mean, I've been to an art class, but not like a really, you know, a really serious one. Mm -hmm. I've been into like uh, the fine art stuff, like where you learn art history, where you just catch, you know, stickmen. I don't know, but it's it's not specifically for like manga art, like illustration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thing. So. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if you're, if you're not Japanese, I'm pretty sure your only chance of like learning something like manga art is pretty much just like copying it and like failing and getting better over time. You know what I mean? Like except in, in, in France, there's there's two schools I think here really? where they specialize in manga. Yeah. Where you just do manga. You do manga pages, you study. Damn. Yeah, yeah. I th I, th I I didn't do any research, but I'm pretty sure there are schools here in France that specialize in uh manga. My god, so. I didn't take my ass to France then. Oh, uh, okay, okay. So so like I said, third and I are both self taught. So I guess I guess we've told we've told our backstory before, so without repeating too much, can we, like third, can you just tell the people your experiences with being self-taught? Like, how did you how did you learn how to draw on your own? Like, can you talk about what resources that you used and stuff like that? And you know what resources that you didn't use, if there's any that you you know went out of your way to not use, just kind of go ahead and talk about it. I'm pretty sure I have an idea that like me and like most other self-taught artists that you used YouTube. Yeah, yeah. well, long story short, YouTube, internet, Google, Pinterest. Yes. Like every picture you can see, even on Instagram, just scroll down, uh, yeah. look at your favorite, you know, artist drawings, study it, just do that. But again, there are problems if you're a beginner because it's hard to know how to study a drawing and yeah that's yeah. the yeah let's put let's put a pin in that actually because i actually want to cover that at some point in the video or in the podcast episode because that's something that i really believe i know we said this isn't going to be a tutorial podcast but that's something that i kind of want to teach and i think it's something that we can actually briefly talk about i think it'd be very valuable information considering who's coming from mainly you third because out of both of us you fell off the least so <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, no stop stop saying that okay fine I need, yes i need mindset grindset mindset did you watch my newest video yes you might yes effect. yes of course uh exactly. <laughs> okay so um my experience being a self taught artist obviously yes obviously youtube played a big role and like this might be a tangent or whatever third but like if we learned from youtube would you argue that we aren't self-taught that we got taught by like people like David Finch. What do you think about that? Oh, oh come on. Okay, so this one, this I've like always... Chicken. It's like chicken before the egg argument, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So because, okay, I've talked about this for a long time on my Instagram stories. Like, mm -hmm. can you call yourself self-thought if someone thought you through YouTube? Because exactly. Being self-thought is like finding uh, answers yourself, you know, yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. what we do is just look up the answers directly <laughs> on YouTube. That's not self-thought. That's just, you know, Wait, that's on, just cheating. But it's like argue, an exam. But wouldn't you argue that we went looking for the answers and we found it in YouTube? 
mind blown right there. <laughs> that's uh, yeah, that's that's my. It's like okay, it's it's like going to an exam, you know, like oh bro, I did not revise for this test. What should I do? Just look up answers on Google. I think it's just that you know because you, okay. you get free resources from YouTube. Mm -hmm. They're quick. They they get straight into the information. You know, you don't have to pay to, to a school and learn stuff. And yeah, yeah, it's kind of weird to think about because, like, okay, so if somebody wanted to learn how to play guitar and they watch YouTube tutorials and then they got really good at playing guitar, would you say that person is self-taught? Uh I get. Okay, I think, I think. Oh, okay, that's hard. <laughs> that's yeah, hard to it, say. It, it's something that you think about so. Like, if you think about it too much, it's like you just keep getting hit with so much. Like, damn. You know what I mean? Okay, I, I yeah, I think we can say someone is a self-thought when mm -hmm. they don't have anyone to correct their mistakes, when they have to mm, tell themselves that's, that's, their mistakes. That's, good, that's a good way to put it. Like because academically speaking, if you make mistakes, you have like 10 teachers to to fix them, you know. Yeah. So you not your responsibility. It's, that's it's true. their responsibility to teach you. But watching a tutorial is it's like paying a teacher to come to your house, explain an equation and then leaves immediately yeah. and you know yeah yeah yeah. i mean that, that makes sense okay so i know it feels like it feels like i'm grilling you third i might be having fun here so <laughs> go go for it okay okay so i personally don't believe in teachers obviously i believe in teachers but like i was never good at listening to teach i mean i listened i just didn't learn from teachers i was i felt like i always understood material more when i learned it myself so at some point i think around towards the end of high school I just stopped paying attention. Like I just be in class and not listen because it never really made a difference because I would just end up going home and having to relearn everything from start from a textbook or like going on like on websites to learn it like that. So throughout most of college, even though I was a biology major, I, I don't even remember actually having a teacher that I actually listened to and learned the material from. I would always just make time for myself on the weekends and like you know study my textbooks and like do the assignments that we had online and i passed all my classes like i had really good grades so would you say that i was self-taught throughout college oh, even though even though i had a textbook is the textbook <sighs> the tutorial is like what is you know what i mean <laughs> yeah okay i think okay i think it's a semi self-taught <laughs> because uh, you, bro i'm so okay so you like said you learned yeah you said you learned from uh from textbook. when you study alone at your home yeah from mm -hmm. textbooks mm -hmm. and okay so okay so how do you define learn something how do you define that like Shit. learn something okay i guess see I, that's hard so if i read i read the text so let's say let's say i'm studying os osmosis in biology i don't it doesn't matter if you know what that is but like you read what you know the definition and like the meaning all that stuff and then you go into the questions the the questions in the textbooks and you answer it based on what you just read wouldn't you argue that the text part that i read isn't that the same kind of value that a video provides so am i self-taught yes <laughs> this is you know let's just stop this is this is turning into a philosophical no 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 no, 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 no. i i, I want to get into this i want to okay. i want to answer this shit because okay. there's like there's different types of learning there's actually learning something and mm -hmm. there's the learning it by heart without actually understanding the the theory do you know what i mean because yeah, okay, yeah. So, that makes sense like there's a lot of there's a lot of things that i can do in art but i couldn't tell you the name of it like for example somebody told me dude your values are really good i'm like what are, what are values and i looked it up i'm like oh yeah my values are pretty good does that make sense is that, yeah exactly that yeah yeah does that yeah okay in art that's what i'm talking about but there's like um for example in exams we really talk about school on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't care, bro. I just want to talk go about it, go for it, go for it. Stuff. There's like learning smart, like what you do. You mm -hmm. learn from your notes. You try to understand the problems and the theory and stuff. And mm -hmm. there's a dumb way, like my way. Okay. Is you don't you don't even try to understand the contents in your book. You just learn all the words by heart and use all that knowledge for your exams. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, Isn't I'm it like sense. cramming? When you don't really understand it, you just like you shove it into your head. Yeah, exactly. And then you forget it later. You forget it. Yeah, that's cramming. Well, hold on. Wait, yeah, hold on. Yeah. You know what? You know what? Third, this is a question that I'm pretty sure even like philosophers of the great times couldn't even solve. So let's just leave it. Oh, I, I, yeah, that was a joke, by the way. I'm not even sure. I don't care. Let's just leave that. Okay. Because that would yeah. just go off forever. But yeah, my experience with being self-taught is that... uh when I was a kid, I've always been drawing. Like, I didn't just start doing this because I like manga. I've been drawing way before I ever knew what manga was or even anime. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When I was a kid, I was obsessed with the cartoon Ben 10. So, like, I used to draw so much Ben 10. 
And like back then when I was a kid, obviously I wasn't like obviously trying to do oh anatomies and forms. Let me what are the forms of this? No, I'm not, I wasn't doing that. I was just like, oh, this, this character is cool. And eventually I just picked up stuff like, um, for example, I never really learned how to color or like how to put shadows. I didn't like watch a tutorial on that. I kind of just bought a tablet and I just started doing it because I remember just copying what I saw from the cartoons you know what i mean yeah and obviously i learned more advanced techniques of doing that and so like in that way maybe you could say i was self-taught that i just looked at what i saw on the box art for ben 10 dvds and i just printed with my crayons and i picked up where shadows should go and how shadows fall on people and like i when i was a kid i started understanding things like light and stuff like that and like how they influence like the colors on characters and stuff like that and when I got older, pretty much when I started being Diddy Mark, then I actually took more steps to like, oh, now I want to get good at drawing like muscle anatomy. And I want to get better at like uh, line weight and hatching and stuff like that. And so I, I went to YouTube and YouTube was pretty much the sources that I use. So in that way, if we're counting YouTube as being self-taught, I am self-taught. So I never went to art school. Have I taken art classes before? Yes, I've taken a lot of art classes over the, like the years that I've been in college and high school. Uh, did they really help? Uh, not that I can think of. I don't know. Have you ever taken art classes, third? Yeah, I've taken like two years of art classes. They did it help try you? to. Uh, uh, no, not at yeah. all. I mean, <laughs> yeah, if you want bro, to watch I, like big YouTubers, they talk about how their art classes didn't really help them. You gonna say yeah, something? Yeah, yeah. I, w I was about to say like the difference I think between a self-thought artist and not self-thought is that there's like someone who's guiding you to a right direction to learn something in terms of techniques theory and you know yeah just general knowledge because most of the time we again going back to youtube we just watch someone explain something without really directly guiding us they just indirectly tell us like what to do because it's like a one side relationship where they give you all the shit but you cannot give back you just receive everything yeah the way i think about it or like the, at least the way i would say it for this podcast i kind of put that i guess if any of you are having that argument in your head of am i really self-taught now like having like existential crisis <laughs> the way i would put it down is like uh you know what? Let me not actually not say some shit I'm not sure of. But but in my mind, uh, in my past life, you know, back when I was uh, Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> okay, let me stop. Oh, let me it. stop. Uh, but I would say someone like Leonardo da Vinci is like genuinely self-taught. I'm just saying that based off what I think his life history was. But I don't think he had any textbooks. Like, obviously, you had his sketchbooks are like available to look at online, I think. And I think he used to just go out and just like draw people. I don't think yeah. he was watching yeah. videos on YouTube. <laughs> he, he, he had printers for sure. He had printers for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe he just like hired like naked people to just stand in his house and just like draw their oh. anatomy because his, his anatomy was God tier. That guy could draw the body like very realistically, you know what I mean? And so I'm just like, yeah. maybe he's truly what self-taught is like and nowadays most people who call themselves self-taught are just saying oh well i didn't go to art school you know what i mean yeah and maybe like other english language words maybe that word has evolved to that's what that means now that if you're self-taught it means you didn't go to an institution or teacher in person for it you just learned online maybe we have to accept that that's what the word means now please feel free yeah. to give your thoughts in the comment section i would love to see it ah yes sir please disagree with me so i just know that everything i said is wrong because i don't even know if i agree with myself yeah and like like i said before we started this we are two clowns with a microphone we yeah. are just here to entertain oh, yeah. you by the way thank you louis art uh for suggesting this topic because i really like this one. Oh, i didn't even know he suggested that yep he did yeah i like this one too i like this one too Okay, so I know we're neither of us went to like traditional art school, but like third, what are your what are your conceptions? Is that the right word? I feel like I might have said the words for condoms, but what are you? <laughs> no, no, hold on, that's contraception. Oh, that oh my, yeah, that's that. a contraception. That's a contraception. Okay, what are your what are your preconceived notions? Mm, there we go. That's a five dollar word mm, right there. What are your preconceived a... notions? Big brain word. Fuck is that word? Yeah, <laughs> didn't what didn't are, finish oh, high school. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what that word means? No, no, I, I got it, I got it. Okay. I, was, <laughs> I started see genuinely ocean. laughing because I thought you didn't know what it was. Okay. <laughs> what do you, like, what have you heard from maybe from other artists or art YouTubers that you watch about art school? And if you're listening to this and you went to art school or and our English check going to art school right now, let us know if we're, if we're right about whatever we're about to say. Third, what do you know about art school? Um, I know that they're not cheap. Um, oh yeah, for expensive. sure. I thought of art school in France are expensive, but uh, then I I knew about America. I was like, okay, mm -hmm. fuck that. I'm sorry, yeah. France. But I but I think art schools are here in France are mostly um there are a lot of elite you know elite class students 
uh, especially like in animation art school here, like I think uh, you have to be at least semi-professional to just get in to art school because they don't really? teach you those. They teach you those fundamental stuff, but they well, yeah, teach yeah, yeah, you more about sense. the cre- they teach you more about the creativity after your first year, because they want you to make projects like constantly, and and I think that's why it's very expensive, because um, you work a lot, and the projects you you do it might get you know published to somewhere, and it might be shared, and it might get popular to the point you can get a real professional job yeah so um, so when it comes to art school i like that you mentioned that they don't really teach you the basics like yeah you pretty much have to know your shit to get into art school at least for america i remember i remember in college even though i have african parents i dared entertain the thought that i could maybe possibly go to art school obviously it didn't happen because african parents but i remember i thought about applying to cal arts yes i know as you know, if you probably know me from my YouTube channel, you know I'm Mr. Go Big Go Home. Cal Arts is like the like the best art school in America. Like most people would agree with that. Yeah, I think I think so. It is because I'm pretty sure if you go to Cal Arts and like form decent to like good connections with some professors in there, you can actually like get great jobs, dude. Like I'm pretty sure there's like fucking big dogs teaching there for fun. So Cal Arts is like not only for the connections you build with other students, but like professors as well, uh, based on what I've seen at least. And yeah, you need a portfolio to apply to any art school in America, period. And the fact that they're asking for a portfolio pretty much means that they want you to have some sort of skill. You can't just be an absolute beginner drawing stick figures. And, yeah, exactly. And, yeah. And if you're listening to this now and like you're maybe older than the air quote college age, don't let that, you know, discourage you. Because didn't Marco Bucci talk about how he was like dookie butter when he applied for art school and they didn't even take him in? Wasn't that yeah, one of his like, he, the most popular videos when he talked about that? Yep. His newest video, I think he talked about like uh, when he was 19, he was a shit artist and then at 27, yeah. he got, he got. Yeah. yeah. And third, let me, let me ask you this question. It might be, a, it might be a quick answer. It might be a quick answer because somebody asked me this recently, somebody in my life, because they were genuinely like curious. They were like, can anybody learn how to draw? Is drawing something you can learn how to do or is drawing something you have in you? What do you think about that? Um, I think art in general is uh, can be learned by by yes. everyone. Yes. The, but, because, because, but, mm-hmm. but there's a big but. There are <laughs> a big but. God. You know me. I like I like I like big but. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Go um, th- there's like there are people who understand theories mm-hmm. faster than like a normal people like me. Yes, we call and, them talented people. So yes, third, and I'm glad you said. It. Sorry, put a pin in what you're saying. I, I'm sorry for cutting you off. I'm sorry. I truly am. All good. All good. We're gonna talk about the talent versus hard work in art in some episode, and I'm glad third brought that up because I've been having a theory that I might be talented. And I'm not even saying that to flex. I'm just saying it, you know, based on what third is saying that the different, like someone who's talented as opposed to someone who's not. In art is a talented person isn't doesn't just come out the womb and is drawing like realistic anatomy no it means they pick it up faster and somebody brought it up to me that dude you learn so fast you're probably talented i'm like no hold on wait no hold on wait one minute you know what i mean but yeah that's my thought i just wanted to say that maybe third has a pen because third is one that gives us the topic ideas maybe he can write it down but yeah carry on third yeah no, it's funny because uh, Atisori and I were just talking about uh, talent versus hard work. So yeah, um, another suggest- suggestion for another friend. So let's go. Um, yeah, again, going back, going back to talent versus hard work. I am the complete opposite of that spectrum mm-hmm. because um, for three years, um, people saw my growth with art, like how I've improved, and everyone talks about like. Bro, you're you're so fast at learning. How do you do it? And every time I explain to them, well, I just draw twelve to fifteen hours a day for three years. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. Yeah, there's no talent to that. It's just hard work. So yeah, yeah, you know, you know, you might be right there. You might be right because when somebody said, "Dude, you're, you've learned, you've gotten this far." Like if you look at my art that I was doing this time last year, and look at the art that I'm doing now. Although third more than anyone knows, I'm not happy with my current art. It is leagues. It's like leagues better than what i was doing last year you know what i mean so when somebody brought that up to me i'm like damn i'm improving so fast and i'm picking up on things that i know takes people a lot longer to understand am i talented but then now the third says it i do draw 14 hours a day so <laughs> you know maybe maybe i'm not maybe i'm genuinely just working hard i know i'm working hard let's maybe that's go. why but we'll talk about it yeah. more when that when we talk kind about that stuff 
kind of pissed off. You learned faster, but but you're going at the same pace as me. So you're gonna learn faster. Yeah, so see, now see, it's I, very, it's so very now, complex. Now I have to draw for 17 hours so I can okay, get to third. your pace. Mm -mm, you do not have to do that. Please, <laughs> please live. <laughs> okay. But yeah, we'll, we reflect. You see, it's very complex. Like, because it's weird. We'll talk about this more when we actually do talk about that topic. It's weird, right? I, I You could argue that I draw the same amount of time as third, but it's taking me a shorter amount of time to grasp some of the things that might have taken even longer. You know what I mean? So am I talented? Maybe before we do that episode, I'm going to have to do genuine research. I know, right? Research for this film podcast. I'm going to have to do genuine research on artists that are like proven to be talented. You know, people like uh, Fujimoto and stuff like that. But whatever, we'll move past that for now. But yeah, anything else you wanted to say third before I move on? Um, this doesn't have to be in the podcast, but I think to some extent you're more talented than me because you, you really grasp uh, stuff faster than me so i i still believe that that's the case third i have two things to say to you number one take your lips off my ass cheeks because you're kissing it thank you but uh, <laughs> I'm, two, just, I'm just I'm, I'm just telling the truth not gonna okay lie. number two i'm gonna leave that in the podcast so everybody knows that the third php thinks i'm good but <laughs> uh bro you're not the one's gonna edit this bro you're not the one i'm gonna let oh, my shit. friend cut this shit <laughs> okay okay you got me there all right whatever back. We're, go we're going back to the question though we're gonna uh, yeah yeah questions. back to back to art back to art school really quick i want to just you talked about your experience or your knowledge of oh yeah for art sure school my bad, my bad. Did, yeah yeah no it's fine did you have did you have anything else to say about that oh uh, no i think i've said everything okay when third told me the topic for today i wrote down some things that i i sat down i recalled some things that i've heard about art school and mind you like i said neither of us have actually gone it's just what i've heard through the grapevine from other artists and art youtubers that i watch and know of so obviously third already mentioned the cost that it's dummy expensive another thing that i've heard is and i know and i know this for a fact it's low-key what's the point yes you could argue that going to art school maybe can help you learn faster because you have that hands-on help from like professors and maybe just being in an environment with other artists and stuff but like what i'm insinuating is art school there's no job guarantee like the thing about art or the field of art that i find that i think it's one of the best fields obviously i'm biased but it's one of the best like career fields is because they're not hiring you based on what paper or what degree you have they're hiring you based on your skill so realistically there's a level playing field right so the thing about art school is like you might pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for art school but the fact that the matter is like if jimmy from kansas that didn't go to art school that like worked at walmart while working on his portfolio every weekend is like air quote better than you because he's just you know more talented or more skilled He's going to get the job, not you. They don't care if you have a degree from Harvard, you know? Maybe maybe the, the, the college degree might get you connections with people and places, but if they're hiring strictly on, you know, what you can do, they're not really going to care about your degree. Like, am I just talking shit here, third? Do you, have you heard of that? No, yeah, I completely agree. I completely agree. I told the same thing to my parents, and I always tell them that you don't need a degree to get a job in this uh, day and age because uh, you, you only need skills to, to really get accepted and just be be a good boy, you know? Yeah. Don't don't be disrespectful. And Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, even, I don't want to go into that uh, that side too much, but, like, even outside the field of art, I would argue a lot you really don't need a college degree to get a good job like obviously it might make things easier but outside of art even if they're not hiring strictly on what you can do and your skills you can really you can really learn things and meet the right people all i'm saying is see like i'm an idiot i just know there's a way you can get a good job without going to college that's all i'll say about that before i say some more dumb stuff uh <laughs> i agree I yeah yeah agree with Mark, so. yeah because like you think of the most successful people on the planet most of them don't even have a college degree but whatever oh yeah uh, exactly another thing that i've heard about art school that i wrote down here is that like bad instructors how many times have i heard of people saying they had a teacher that said don't draw the anime style or like don't draw cartoons like the only way the only right way to draw and be an artist is the the highbrow thumb up your ass like fucking art gallery world type thing that's just bad advice you know what i mean it's like bullshit, imagine yeah. imagine it yeah exactly imagine if eight year old oda went to art school and he got a, a teacher like that like maybe forced him to not go with that direction with his creativity you know what i mean the world had been robbed from such a great talent like there are probably talented people out there that have been led astray by bad teachers i'm not even talking strictly in the art world right yeah but yeah Thurn, you want to add anything are you stressed you good nope uh all good i completely agree with what you said and yeah mm -hmm. and now that we're just finishing this first topic i'm not remembering third 
at the beginning, did we tell people that we were gonna talk about manga and anime? Yeah, we actually did. Did, did, did I say that? I forgot. Uh, well, I mean, you you teased it. You said okay. you were gonna talk about fun stuff. Oh but... yeah, 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 I did. Well, just in case I didn't, I didn't specify at the beginning, ladies and gentlemen. We are third, and I are gonna be talking about our top five favorite anime and manga. Now, third, are we talking about like anime slash manga and just one five list or? Is it like a list of 10 with like five anime and five manga? No, it could be mixed. I don't have like a specific, you know, top five for a manga and top five for anime. I mix them both. Okay, um, well, but, uh, do you have like two two lists for manga? Yeah, yeah, I have I have two lists, but it's fine. Like it's not like a competition or something. If you if you have a mixed list, that's fine. We kind of just want to just hear each oh. other's you know thoughts and make some people mad in the comment sections. That's what this is for. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and please let us know your your top five in the comments below. I really want to see it in the comments and get triggered by what you guys choose but yeah <laughs> yeah you want to start okay you want me to start yeah let's start like if we have too much fun with this topic we can put top 10 instead of top five all right bet bet and also on my story did i say this part too god i have l memory bro <laughs> on my story whatever on my story i'll say it again i asked people to tell me what they think the most underrated no not underrated the most overrated anime and manga they think is and i also think i asked them for the most overrated one too I can't remember. God, I have L memory. Jesus Christ. <laughs> we, we tired as fuck. We're really tired. But yeah. Uh, okay. Let's get started here. I'm going to start with my top five anime third. Now third, you probably know one. You know one. I just want you to guess one. Because I told you last episode. Guys, if third gets this wrong, I want you to type L third in the comments. Wait, what? Bro, I have, I have a brain of a fish. <laughs> what the heck? I Is told it? you last episode third. I was editing the second episode today. And I remember you reacting to what I told you. Yeah, my yeah, One of my yeah. favorite anime is. And it led to a whole tangent third. Come on. Oh, 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 did you say anime or manga? Anime. Anime. One of them. Anime. I told you third. If you don't know it, I actually tell you what it is. You're gonna remember. And you're gonna bro, go I'm like, gonna, oh shit. Bro, I'm gonna jump off this apartment Dude, right now. You I'm... know this. I've told you this. You know. Okay, this. okay. Just tell me the the top four, and I'm gonna try to guess. Okay. You... My top four. Should I explain why they're my top four briefly? Yeah, yeah for sure, say? for sure. It's it's better. So I have more time to think about your favorite <laughs> anime. Okay, number one, Naruto. Why? Because Naruto is just hype. Yes, there's a lot of filler. If you skip the filler, it's hype. Shut up. And because Naruto Naruto was my gateway anime. You know how it goes, ladies and gentlemen. You watch Naruto once. That's your first anime. Next thing you're, you're doing is you're on Google typing anime like Naruto. And then you watch shit like Fairy Tail or, or like uh, Hunter Hunter. That's how it goes. That's how it started for me. Naruto is my yeah. first anime. It's my favorite anime of all time. It's got a special place in my heart. I understand it has flaws. But to me, it is just unbeatable. And yes, I have watched One Piece, and it's not even in my top five. <gasps> Controversial. We have we, we have that one unbiased uh, anime uh, top, top five, right? It's yeah, like yeah. the art. It's like our childhood. Yeah, exactly, know? exactly. And number three, because I'm skipping number two, because third, that's what you should be guessing. My oh, number God damn it! Yeah, my third one Fuck. is. The Disastrous Life of Psyche K. Do you know that one third? Yep. Yeah. I've, I haven't watched it, but I've, I've heard about it. Okay. Well, in my personal opinion, that anime is the funniest anime I've ever watched. And that's saying something because most anime aren't funny. I don't know. Is it just me? But like, I don't want to say Japanese humor in general, but like, because clearly not because Psyche K is funny. But like anime humor is just, most of them is just not funny. Like Konosuba, yes, is funny. Psyche K is funny as hell. That shit had me like. Gintama? Busted. Gintama? Gintama was not funny. Gintama was not funny. Gintama never, I've was not... never watched that. I was okay, just good. You. <laughs> good. <laughs> I, sorry, I got so defensive, bro. Some people say <laughs> Gintama is never, funny. <laughs> never watched Gintama in my life. I was just asking. <laughs> I got so aggressive, and you were just so calm. I never watched. I go, oh, my bad, bro. Gintama wasn't funny to me. But then again, people say you have to watch like 50 episodes before it gets good. I'm not waiting that long. I watched like three episodes, I was bored. And like, there was one other anime that everyone says is funny, but I don't think it's funny. Oh, Grand Blue. That shit's not funny. Grand Blue? I've watched one episode of Grand Blue and he dropped it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's not funny. It's not even like, it wasn't even entertaining. We might need to like stick on it, but whatever. Um, yeah. I so might I watch it. I might finish it. I never know. Yeah, I am looking for more anime. Speaking of, tangent, tangent. I actually finally finished uh, high school of the high school or classroom, whatever. High school of the elite. Finally hey. finished. It. Remember, remember, I told you I was going to start it. I finished it. Yeah. I actually loved it. I actually loved it. I can definitely Let's see why edgy go. teens like it. Yeah. Definitely see Let's why go. edgy teens like it. But when we finish recording this episode tonight, I'm definitely going to look for more anime that feels like that. Okay. Let me back to my list. Back to my list. After Psychic K, number four. One Punch Man, season one, not season two. Why? Because it's One Punch Man. Jesus, it's just good. It's just good. And uh, last but not least, Hunter Hunter. 
Come on, do I need to defend I, 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 that one? No, you don't. Exactly. I'm writing everything. I, I because I'm trying and to you, pinpoint the top two. But you do two. like a puzzle, bro. You do like a puzzle. But yeah, that's uh, that's four out of five. Now I would have had Death Note in here, and I also would have had um, Rent a Girlfriend in here. There's so many that I would have had in here, but like, bro, you, in my you top have five. The- you have the mainstream. You have the One Punch yeah, Man. I you am... have the Hunter Center. You have the Naruto. Yes, sir. Holy I am. Shit. I am. You're gonna very... hate me with. You're gonna hate me with my top five, bro. People yeah, are gonna dude, hate like... me with my top five. <laughs> yeah, people. If you're listening to this, yes, I am very main. I am very like. Uh, what's the word? There's a fucking word for it. I'm very vanilla. No, not vanilla. That's for him. Not I'm, vanilla. Uh... <laughs> no, yeah, that's for him. What's the op- What's the opposite of niche? Um. Normie. I'm normie. 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 I'm very normie? fucking normie. Yeah. Maybe, okay. We use that word now for normies. Wow. Why is that? Is that a good word to use? No, no, it's not. I mean, yeah, it is. Okay. What the fuck am I saying? Yes, it is. Yeah, I am a normie. Uh, what's but the, yeah. What's the, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to think. Is it a new anime or, it's, or is it an old one? Oh, dude, third. I'm disappointed. You should know this. It's an old one. It's, it's an not even old that. One? It's not that old. It's not like nineties. It's like before 2010s, but not... Before 2010? Before 2010, but not past 2003. I need as much... Um, All right, fine. Can't... I'll say my top five manga really quick. I won't explain. I'll just say it because obviously I don't need to defend these. Just, just to get it out the way. Okay, my number one, my favorite manga of all time is One Punch Man. Uh, why? Strictly the art. The, f- the story is funny too, but for me, the art beats everything else on this list. Oh, okay. Like okay. Both story and art. Uh, number two is Chainsaw Man because if I had to choose based on both art and story, then Chainsaw Man would be number one. But to me, One Punch Man's art alone makes me like it more than Chainsaw Man. Fight me. Mm. Um, number three is Kaiju <laughs> number eight. You also no- you also notice my manga list is very normy. Fight me. I don't care. Um, Don Da Don and Sakamoto Days. That's, that's oh. my uh, top five manga. Yeah. Oh shit! Yeah, See, that's so, more a that's more a unique one. Really? Like, Sakamoto, yeah, Sakamoto, yeah, Sakamoto hey, days. Yeah, it's Loki. It's not that big. But the reason my lists are so normy is because some people don't realize this. I wasn't an anime fan. That's why I started drawing. I started drawing. I like I had been drawing and then became an anime fan to improve my drawing. You know what I mean? So I got into anime and manga recently just because I started drawing manga, you know what I mean? I like, see. Yeah, so I saw the art style of manga first. I fell in love with it. And they're like, you know what? Maybe I should start reading manga. Yeah, but I haven't been a weeb for a long time. Actually, that's a lie. I watched anime like since freshman year of high school. <laughs> but manga, I recently started reading manga. Okay, actually, I have a I have a list for a manga. I think I just made one now, but... Uh... All right, fine. You can say your list, and then I'll give you one last chance to guess my number two anime. Bro, I don't know. I give up on that, bro. Fine, I'll I'm... tell you. It's Bakuman, dude. You know this. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. I'm gonna, bro. I, we're not gonna have a, Okay, guys. We're not gonna have an episode four because I'm gonna kill myself. I'm just joking. I'm not. Good joke. Yeah. We had a whole tangent about friends, dude, because of it. Last God episode. Damn it. You probably forgot. You probably forgot. And hopefully, no, I did, by the time I did not forget. This, I, bro, do you know I, why I did not forget that? Because I, I talked about it with Hattisori. Ah, man. That's sick. Okay. <laughs> no, th- that's why I like you. You have Bakuman. It's fucking Yeah, fucking it's fucking sick. Bakuman. It's just the whole vibe it's inspirational but like it's also wholesome but it also has a good story it's like you can just watch it in bed and feel like you can just get inspired and feel like a oh, sad man. white girl at the same time <laughs> you know yeah it's like there's romance in it i don't want i don't want to go i just keep talking about it forever but let me hear your top five third i know you don't have okay. 10 like me but let me hear your five uh, top one for okay. anime okay so uh, first of all i'm gonna explain why i yeah, have yeah. this top five i picked this top five because I wanted to be diverse, I want to, I wanted to, mm. uh, you know, to have a v- variety. We're about okay? to hear all types of shit in this list. Mm-hmm. They're gonna be the shittest top five ever. Top right, go one, ahead. it's gonna be, well, it's gonna be action comedy, Mob Psycho 100. Yep. Oh, I know. that's a good it's, one. That's a good one. Yep. Good one. Good it's one. mainstream, but not a lot of people know about it because One Punch Man is really putting the. Yeah, yeah. But I think it, I would, I would argue I would argue Mob, Mob Psycho is overtaking One Punch Man unless it yeah, ends well, with a bang unless the manga ends with a bang. But when season three comes out of Mob Psycho, it's gonna be bigger than One Punch Man. Yep, I would say. yep, for sure, for sure. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's comedy action. We're gonna go for psychological uh, thriller for top two. Steins okay. Gate. Oh, dude, okay. I couldn't get into Steins Gate. I knew you would say that shit. Oh man. Yeah. Okay, so right. a lot of people hate Steins Gate um, because the first eleven episodes are shit, but. Let me tell you now, the first 11 episodes aren't shit because people are saying, bro, it's boring. The it was boring. First part, it is boring. I agree. Yeah. But <laughs> but it's important for the story because it's it's actually going to hit you in, in the heart when, once you, once you just, just watch it. Okay. Okay. So what so, I'm hearing is you have patience. 
Yeah, exactly. It depends. <laughs> Um, top three. Okay, this is not in order, by the way. But uh, yeah, top three. Okay, it's gonna be One Piece. Um, oh, of course. I mean, oh, for course. sure. Why not? One Piece no is great. I'm not gonna hate. Yeah, it's amazing. No, uh, no explanation. Just the storytelling is great. I don't know how a, a human does it. Top four. It's gonna be sports. High Q. Yeah, hate really? me, guys. I didn't Please think you were a high Q guy. I didn't think you were a girl. I feel like high Q is mostly girls that like it. What? No, don't get okay. me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. What? I love high. I love high But like, I feel like it's mostly girls that have it in their top. Is it right. just me? I feel like it even no. appeals. It appeals I don't to girls. Even though I don't have girlfriends, bro. I'm what are you not talking sure. about? People call it the beautiful boys doing sports, like doing good things, whatever. That's that's free. That's free. That's like the swimming shit. That's like Yuri on Nice. Haikyuu okay, is okay. different. We okay, have season Haikyuu. three, Shira Torizawa. We have fucking Tsuki, who like did a fucking block against fucking... Oh okay. my god, bro. It's, okay, it's... fine. Listeners do not get upset with me. I am not saying Haikyuu is for girls. I just thought their target audience was girls. No. Even though it's no, a show. It's far from it. It's far from girls, bro. It's like the most. It's the most shonen. No, it's not the most shonen, but it's like one of the most shonen sports ever. It's like Kuroko really? no Basket. Free is for the girls, like Yuri on Ice. There's like some. All right. Okay. You, you sold me. Haiku. Haiku is not for girls. You sold me. Haiku might be for girls, but not for. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go. Uh, <laughs> the top five. Are be crazy. Yep. Top five. It's gonna be a romance. It's uh, Anohana. Oh, that's Anohana good. This time. That shit actually had me fucking emotional towards the end. I didn't cry, though. I ain't no bitch. But yeah, <laughs> bro, I'm a I'm a bitch. I gladly <laughs> accept that I'm a bitch, bro. Bro, those tears worth it. I, I don't care. I did not I did not expect it to move me like that, bro. It moved me, bro. I was like, bro, damn. The reason why I like it is because like everyone had a good a story yeah, plot they did. and they every did. everything made sense. Weirdly uh, enough, that anime that anime made me wish I had friends. <laughs> That's sad, but yeah, same. Yeah, and I'm like sometimes I watch shows, I'm like, damn, friends look nice. And then in real life, whenever <laughs> I had friends, they were just like backstabbing assholes. It's like where are these good like right or die friends that TV always says? But whatever. Yeah, exactly. Well, I, I can get to manga, but I only have top three. No, it's fine. It's fine. You say whatever you have left. Okay, this is the most mainstream shit, but. Top one, uh, it's Attack on Titan. Oh, that Attack on Titan is good, dude. Like, don't be ashamed of that. That's good shit. Yeah, that's the goodest shit you can get. Um, yeah, top it's good. two. This might be a weird one, but I I say Doctor Stone because Doctor Stone. I've never heard that before. It's not a bad <laughs> choice. I just never heard it. Like Doctor Stone is, is the manga is drawn amazingly, obviously, yeah. and like the story is like it makes science cool, which is crazy to think about. And I am a scientist. I have a biology degree. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you now. Um, the reason why I got into the manga is is because of the anime. I, I've watched the first three episodes. I got intrigued by the synopsis, by the plot, so I started <clears throat> reading it. And I and then I I realized, bro, the manga is so much better. So I started reading really? it. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Because I was gonna continue the anime, but not, I might just read the manga now. No, it's the art that's you know that's really course, mesmerizing. So yeah. Yeah. Um, you know what? I'm gonna put top four for the first half of Promise Neverland. That that's it. Yeah. No. Pro no. Don't, Promise Neverland was amazing. Like it is the reason it, it took the world by storm when it first started. Yeah. Sometimes series don't stick to landing, and that's an L. Isn't that kind of what happened with uh? Undead Unlock. I know Undead Unlock is still going, but like, oh, weren't yeah. people saying it was like it was gonna be the next big thing? Nobody's talking about it right now. It didn't. Yeah. It didn't stick. It's kind of sad though. It, it, it had a good start. It had a great start, and then it just fell out of grace. Even though the chapter one was kind of very weird, you know, just groping chicks. I don't. I wasn't for that, but <laughs> yeah, but it had a good start. It just uh, didn't stick yeah. landing. You always but, hate to see that. It always just hurts to see that shit. We always get that uh, series like at least three times a year. But yeah, yeah which is sad. Times a year, man. But yeah. Oh, oh, oh. So are you, are you done third? I I have one last, but wait. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. My top five is Fire Punch. Okay. You say Fire Punch? Yeah. Oh, great choice. Great choice. My uh, God. That's a good choice. I had so much fun reading that. So I, can, it I, is I fun. had to put it up. It is so fun. Good. Like you have no idea how crazy it is. I'll be reading manga on my phone at like 2 a.m. 
I see a pattern on fire punch that made me go like, wake the fuck up. Like, wait, what? <laughs> like I just, that shit it's low-key jarring but it's fun <laughs> yeah all of a sudden you just see a guy just ask a little kid to you know do something unspeakable to a dog and you just like wake the <laughs> fuck up like wait what up, wait what it's just bro like that story of fire punch is so fucked up it's like the same it's as messed Chainsaw up. Man, but yeah yeah it's like cha- like i feel like fire punch is a little bit more unhinged though i feel like chainsaw man is about to go more crazy because it's on jump plus now what do you think? Um, I'm not sure. They're they're both messed up. I mean, I I'm not. I heard Fujimoto was restricted because he was in the main like magazine. Oh so yeah. Now that he's a jump plus, he can go crazy. I'm just like, damn. I want to see. It's it's like not having an editor anymore. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But yeah. it is what it is. Okay, before we move on to questions, because we almost forgot that we do that. <laughs> oh yeah, um, that's true. Oh my god. Oh, really quick, really quick. I want us to just really quick talk about because I promised earlier talk about how to study other artists just really quick because i feel like that information is not that out there so so Kirk, can you give your two cents on what you think it means to study as an artist well okay for me studying an artist is just uh okay there's two types there's like purely copying an artist and trying to apply their techniques to your art and there's the part where you watch them draw and actually observe how they actually do stuff. Because the first one is just looking at a finished drawing and trying to, you know, reverse draw, or like reverse work their art, like try to understand how they done it. But there's the other one where you actually look at them draw in front of you. It's like mm-hmm. watching someone draw uh, on a YouTube video. So that's like, that's how I study artists. Okay. I don't know if, did that make sense? Yeah, no, 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 that, that makes sense to me. That makes sense to y'all. <laughs> JK, you guys can't answer. You're just watching <laughs> yeah. this. <laughs> but no, I agree. Uh, I've said it in videos before, but the way I think to study an artist is, or study in general as an artist, is to copy, copy, copy. So like, for example, let's say I wanted to study how to draw the human arm. Anatomically correct. You find reference, because reference is very important, and you copy, like, eyes up, look, eyes down, draw. Eyes up, look, eyes down, draw. You do that, and you're not just blindly copying. And I've said this, I might make a t-shirt about this. You're not just blindly copying. You're understanding everything that you're doing. You're understanding how these muscles intertwine and why they go this way. And like what happens when the arm bends and why does it bend? You kind of want to truly and deeply understand that because that's going to help in the next step of that, which is the actual like practicing stage of the general process of studying which is where you try to reproduce what you copied without the reference now the key part here is it's okay if you can't remember how something is drawn you kind of just have to go back look at your reference and like actually draw it there's one thing i heard from ethan becker that stuck with me he was like in this day and age you never ever ever have to guess anything if you don't know how to draw it just take a couple seconds and look up reference for it. So that's what I think it means to study an artist. You'd be surprised how often I get that question. And I understand it, it might seem a little daunting when you just tell someone, uh, go study as an artist. It's like, what, what does that even mean? So if, if you're wondering that, that's my answer. And I guess you just heard third answer. Third, what do you think about my answer? Was it dumb? No, it's 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 perfectly fine. I think I agree, yeah. Because um, man, that's what, that's what I do though. Like that's what I do to learn. I just copy, 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 understand. If I don't know something, I just look it up and learn. Yeah, okay. So now that we've, you know, explained that because I promised we would, I'm now going to kind of just read off a few of the answers that I got here from my followers on Instagram when I asked them what they thought the most overrated anime and manga were. And I think I've got some interesting responses here. Somebody says, third, you're not going to like this one. Somebody says One Piece. Wait, did they say overrated? Yes, overrated. Okay, what's the, okay let, let me unblock that person once. They're at... Uh, okay, yeah. sure, sure. <laughs> no, <laughs> they, have an, they have an explanation. So true manga underscore art says one piece, comma, it's just a very slow paced anime. Great concept, but taking way too long to execute it. I mean, I get it. I, I get it and I agree to an extent. It depends on what kind of person you are. But I think one piece isn't necessarily about the destination. It's about the journey. And Oda wants to make that oh, very clear. Come on. Okay, that guy yeah. that, that that guy is really young because he he doesn't know that old classic anime, they are they are all slow paced. Even Dragon Ball slow paced. Naruto is slow paced. But look at yeah, that. Like, like yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Unlike Nar on like Naruto and like all the other slow paced stuff. Oda wants you to soak in the journey. He like at the end of the day, when Luffy inevitably gets the One Piece, that's not going to be the whole point. He wants you to reflect on the whole journey it's taken to get him here. You know what I mean? That's I think yeah. that's the point of One Piece. Um, but yeah, let me not... I just don't understand when someone say like the best anime statistically on Shonen Jump is overrated. Mm-hmm. I just don't get that. Like, why the fuck would you say like top one is overrated? 
like yeah just because you don't like something doesn't mean others don't yeah know? it's show that it's like it's it's good like it's great don't yeah. say it's overrated it's just good you know yeah yeah i agree i agree i i think i think one piece is good it's not in my any of my top fives not because i don't think it's good it's just my personal preference i like more yeah. brain dead action stuff that's why you see stuff like one punch man and chainsaw man on my list yeah exactly um, it's like it's, it's if it's not your thing it's not your thing yeah, just yeah. tell just just tell us it's 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 long as fuck because i understand yeah but i would i would never say one piece is bad though i will however say that some of the one piece fans out here just i need, I need to chill because one piece is not perfect third you might disagree with what i'm about to say here but um what's the name of the arc this terrible terrible arc with the clown Punk Hazard. Punk, Punk Hazard, Hazard was fucking boring, dude. Oh, Caesar, Caesar, Caesar the Clown. Yes, yeah, Punk Hazard was boring. I'm sorry, Punk Hazard was boring. Like it is boring. It's, it's the start of like the one arc or something because it, you know, it, yeah. uh, it introduced a lot it, of the character. Yeah, it introduced the boy and the samurai. Mm-hmm. That arc didn't really hit me, but yeah. But yeah, exactly. One, one Piece is not perfect. Now, in grand scheme of things, Punk Hazard is, I guess, generally still a good arc, but for One Piece standards, it's, it was slow, very boring. Uh, okay, so if you opinion. if you if you wanna enjoy One Piece like for real, don't watch the anime. Just read the manga because there's no there's. I think there, so too. I think so too. Like they're not gonna prolong the episodes because there's gonna be a point where when you watch an episode, there's like not a lot of content in it because they caught up to the manga. Yeah, so they, yeah, yeah. So they had to slow down the pace. That's why the after time skip saga is like really slow and really boring. Yeah. Okay. Third, we spent too much time on that one because I know you're passionate about One Piece. But so let's oh, yeah. kind of go through this really quickly. Uh, we're not gonna say everyone, so I appreciate you if you sent in your response. But unfortunately, we can't get to everybody. Um, somebody said MHA story isn't really anything deep or special in my opinion. Just generic hero story. What do you think about that? I agree, but it's hype. <laughs> I agree too. I it's agree hype too. though. It's hype though. It's hype though. Hey, yeah, yeah. Can't, can't complain. It's hype. Yeah, MHA lost me in uh, the like the arc with the gentleman. I was like, what is this, bro? You, remember, you know what I'm talking about? The gentleman and oh, that little Oh no, I did not watch that. I mean, I read the yeah. manga, but I did not watch the the anime. Yeah, it lost me there, bro. I was like, nah, this ain't it. But you know, third says the most recent chapters are are hitting, so I I believe him. Yeah, okay, let's keep going. Anything. Someone says Black Clover and Naruto. Oh, Naruto? Well, this person is clearly... Uh, yeah, get out of here. Yeah. MK Delusional. Kanye. Come on, man. <laughs> Just nah, I'm joking. Naruto, Naruto is kidding. definitely, definitely very flawed in a lot of aspects. But overall, I still like it. This person yeah, says it's... One Punch Man is overrated. Murata is a goat. Don't get me wrong. Just the story doesn't do it for me. Yeah, that's fine. I understand it, I guess. What do you I think mean, about that? It, it, it breaks the... Uh... For me, it's not over it. It's really unique to, compared to other comedy because um, it breaks the the OP character protagonist and, directly. And one did that on purpose. Like for example, like one saw people like Goku, like where the more powerful they get, the bigger their hair gets. And one said, "Fuck that, bald guys yeah. still powerful." Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? Yep. So I I disagree that One Punch Man is overrated, but I can't understand if somebody is not for the story. Like I know I know a lot of people that genuinely like genuinely don't like the story in One Punch Man. I'm like sure if you're going to One Punch Man looking for like a Death Note esque like storytelling, you're not gonna find it there. So you know what I mean. Whatever. Uh, somebody said Hunter Hunter. You what? Okay, just just Hunter, keep Hunter. that. Just just keep that, guys. Keep that. Guys. Spiders. <laughs> like ex- at least explain yourself. He just said it. Like explain. You can't just say that, dude. What? Yeah, just just All right. keep. Looking at more, someone said Sword Art Online. This might be uh, a hot take, but I I like Sword Art Online. It got worse when I like the first season. Season two is shit, I think. Yeah, season one is good. Season one is good. Is but it season, the season one got two worse. or season three? I don't remember. I stopped midway. <laughs> I, yeah, I season remember. one. Season one is good, but see, it started falling off in season one when Asuna got that the girl got oh, introduced. Uh, it got oh, so weird, oh, man. Yeah. And there was like they had a baby and everything. It was just weird, man. The last one. Last one. Someone said Demon Slayer. Not a bad shonen. But people act like it's the second coming of Hunter Hunter. I completely, a thousand percent agree. You're not I going agree. to Demon Slayer to watch fucking story. You're going there to see Sakuga. I'm sorry, the story is not that. The story is okay. It's pretty good for shonen. But like, Damn. why are we acting like it's the next biggest thing? I mean, it's the biggest thing. But come on. It's... I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get a lot of hate. But it's it's the story's mid. <laughs> you use the word that should never be spoken third. How dare you? <laughs> Story Smith animation is the best. I think it's the one. Yeah, like, animation is the best. It's the best animation I've seen. That's why it got a lot of popularity during the pandemic. Even the uh, the celebrities started watching it. Yeah, yeah. Would you say? Would you say it was? I, I feel timing sort of played a role in Demon Slayer's come up. It's like especially during the pandemic, and like back then it was like the best thing out. Yeah. at that point so it, it, was, like, it was the best timing ever like best yeah best moment to put out like one of the best sakuga and also best timing for celebrities to tweet it so more people buy yeah, the physical yeah. book and actually that is true 
That is true. But yeah, that's that's pretty much. There's a lot more responses, but that's pretty much what we have time for. Because uh, I know Third also got questions from uh, your story as well. Uh, but really quick, Third, what are your thoughts on Jujutsu Kaisen? I know you're a trash taste viewer. I agree with somebody in that, but I'm not gonna say who because I don't want to get canceled. Fresh what do you think about JJK? Taste. Okay. Oh my god, people are gonna hate me for this. <laughs> people are gonna hate. People are gonna hate us, dude. It's god fine. fuck. God fucking damn it. Jujutsu Kaisen mm. is okay. It's not bad. Yes. It's it's yes. okay. It, it's not as amazing as someone will make it seem. I, I hate good. when people say, bro, the Jujutsu Kaisen is like the best manga right now, no, like ever. Dude. I'm like, no, oh, dude. come on. It's I'm the caught same. Up, I'm caught up to the manga. The manga is good, but. It's the same oh. shonen writing shit. It's just reversed. Like, what the heck? Yeah, I... it, it's very familiar, but it's like different enough to where it's not like repetitive, you know? Yeah, it's, but that's it's what still, I think. It's the same it's formula with the shonen stuff. Like, they got that, you know? They got yeah, that for sure. formula for, for the shonen and shit, and and did it and did a lot of those shonen things better. So it's not like it's just it it took a lot of the classic shonen things and, and made did it better. it better. Yeah, but it's still not like it's not like as groundbreaking it's, it's, as it's not Fujimoto. It <laughs> it's not. It's not. Yeah, Fujimoto is like you. You can have your thoughts about Fujimoto and his writing and his storytelling. Oh, bro, but I love his like, I love his one shots. Yeah, so. that's what I'm saying. Fujimoto is like breaking a lot of like he's breaking a lot of rules. He's pioneering. Jujutsu Kaisen is like it's good but like it's very familiar but that's enough for that so we don't get cancelled just by this third episode oh, um, but it. whatever third let's let's go to your questions really quick because I know you had some hefty looking questions okay. we're gonna start uh, with a really short uh, question from Hatesori actually can you really quick really quick can you tell the people listening the question that you actually asked on your story oh yeah okay so we asked people like if you have any related questions to being a self-taught artist or being thought professionally uh in school so the first question was uh hati sort of asked is there a really important sentence or moment that someone said to you in your life who influenced or motivated your way of learning um this uh Duck in the ass and call it Michael Jackson's uncle. Jesus Christ! <laughs> what a question! What a uh, question! My God, that's a thinker. You should have told yeah. me that way before we started recording, so I could think about that. Yeah, right. That is an that is a great question. The reason why I took that answer is because I actually have the answer right away. That's fine. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I'll think. I'll try to think of something while you talk. Yeah. So the first person who opened my eyes to make art my passion. It's Kuzumari. Um, it's really simple, like the way he explained it in a video. So I was, you know, I everyone knows this story now, but there was this one video where I wanted to learn how to draw heads. And so I just look it up on YouTube. I found like a video about how to draw heads at any angles. And then I clicked it and it was Kuzumari. And there was this sentence uh, where he actually like made everything click for me. He explained like how perspective is everything in the world. Like for example, your screen is just a box. Um, your table is just a box. Everything is, is just a box, but the more complicated ones. That is and, amazing advice. And that made everything click for me. And that changed my whole perspective in art. And yeah. That's a good, that's a good answer. That's an amazing answer. To be honest, third, that is, that is something that is very underrated. It's like, I feel like a uh, intermediate to professional artist knows that, but sometimes I'm speaking for myself here. Sometimes I have to catch myself lagging. Like sometimes I'm drawing and I'm struggling to draw this perspective or something. And I just like catch myself and I'm like, dude, this is just a cube. And I just break it down and I just draw it easily as opposed to like struggling to like freehand that shit. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so that's, that's, that's a very good, like the whole world is made up of a shape or a combination of 3D shapes. It's when you think about stuff like, when you think about the world like that, it makes it like having to draw it a lot less daunting, right? Like I'm sitting in my room right now and I'm looking at this room and just the thought of drawing that, like drawing this room and drawing like my TV, the dresser and everything without like taking that into account, it's so much like scarier as opposed to like, well, my TV is just a, just a really thin rectangular box. My dresser is just a tall cube. Like it's, it just makes things so much easier. Yeah, that's exactly. That's pretty much what I'll say on that. Cause it's, so, that's so good. It's so good advice. I feel like I have to tattoo that on my eyelids so I can remember it every time I blink. But, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, um, good question by Hatesoru. So, so the advice that I got isn't necessarily like directed towards art, but it definitely affects the way I approach learning in art. 
And it was a sentence that my dad has been saying to me since I was a little kid. Whenever he told me that, he mostly was referring to it about academics because like, you know, he was really big into like, go to school, get a degree. But I think it applies to every facet of life, not just even just academics and not just art either. My dad used to always tell me when I was a boy that, and even till today, he always used to tell me that great men, and I guess great men and women, they don't have two heads. Now, that might sound strange. And I, I don't know where he got that from. I don't know if he made it up. It doesn't matter. But the point is, great men and women don't have two heads. Meaning, if there's somebody great out there accomplishing things that seem impossible, what do they have that's better than you? They have one brain. They have one head just like you. So if you put your mind to it, you can achieve anything. You can achieve what people consider inachievable, like have done. You can do that too, if that makes sense. So that's why it might seem so strange to people when I can just brazenly say, well, I want to be like Yusuke Murata or I'm going to be like Yusuke Murata. And that's why I would never laugh at somebody that tells me they want to outsell One Piece in volume sales. Imagine saying that to someone. Third. Imagine someone just saying that to you. Doesn't it kind of just take you aback a little bit? Well, my goal is to have a manga that outsells One Piece. It sounds like you're stupid. That's impossible. But the fact of the matter is Oda is just a guy. He's just a human, just like the rest of us right it's possible now there's obviously don't be naive enough to think that luck doesn't like there's no there's no luck in that but there is luck but the fact of the matter is that the fact that one human can achieve it meaning everybody else is capable for example if a human learned like forced themselves somehow to learn how to fly do you know what that means third they're weird no <laughs> yeah i guess <laughs> it means it means that the rest of us can fly too yeah <laughs> it's it sounds Obviously, I, I, don't please don't go jump off a building. You, we cannot fly. Human beings cannot fly. But I'm just <laughs> saying, if a news story came out and a guy was on TV and it was legit and he said, well, I sat down and I really concentrated and I learned how to fly. What that would mean is, well, hold on. So that means humans can fly because if he if he can do it, then the rest of yeah. us can. Maybe, maybe realistically, maybe there's some something wrong with the guy's brain or something. Yeah, but let's not go too deep into <laughs> it's that. It's just a fucking alien. <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 I completely agree because you said it in one of your vid again like everyone is a human like if you put everyone at the same level then you you can for sure do what that guy do you know especially in art yeah, yeah. because it, in art everything is possible because there's a difference between art and just sports because sports is more gene genetically you know different let's just say yeah but yeah in, but in art it's really anything can happen that's true that's very true yeah it's obviously in sports there's like if you're not tall then realistically you know there's some things that you can and can't do but especially in art like third said it's possible like the, the hardest part that i found in this art journey isn't necessarily the getting better part it's not necessarily getting better at art and getting better at drawing it's the mindset part of it that's the hardest the aspect of where you have to wake up every day and tell yourself to do this thing even though you might doubt with every bone in your body that you're capable of it but you still have to like push yourself and still find a way to believe in yourself underneath all that doubt right so yeah that's what i'll say i don't want to go too dd philosophical good answer yeah yeah even though we talked about the whole philosophy of is anyone self-taught <laughs> it's a philosophy yeah. podcast uh but oh, yeah man. good question and good answer from you third i know you said good, good answer for me good good, good answer, answer for you and good mentality too yeah thanks dad for that good answer um <laughs> all right really quick what's the second question i know the second one is pretty long do you think can you break it down really quick it's it's from ash ketchup good name good name oh they have multiple questions actually so the first one is do you have any advice for critiquing your own art to be able to see where you need to improve? For me, it's easy to tell that something is wrong in a drawing, but it's hard for me to figure out what exactly is wrong with it. That's a good question. Yep, yep. The second question, question is, yep. when you are studying a specific thing like anatomy, form, perspective, etc., is there a way to sort of know when you should move on to more advanced stuff so you don't just stagnate and do the same things? Also, do you have any advice for how much you should start incorporating more advanced things in your practice and studies bro that's a really dense good question these are these are like questions we can make a whole book about <laughs> yeah yeah we'll try our best to answer it rapidly was that is that the last one in that whole thing yeah yeah it's the last okay. one you want to um, start or I, should I, start? I can start for the first question I, I you know what i'm gonna answer the first and you can answer the second if you want yeah yes let me get the harder question <laughs> is it the harder question oh, shit. i think it is i think it's the harder question <laughs> <laughs> You know what? We can both jump in if we feel appropriate for either either one. Let's just make it. Let's not make it too long though. But let's. Oh God let's it, let's, let's <laughs> just it. You're dodging the second question. Aren't you? I'm such a. Yeah, you were. You douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. Okay, the first one. How do you critique yourself? 
mm-hmm. in order to improve and see your own mistakes. Um, honestly, just you know, repeat. Uh, just repeat. Oh, yeah, it's hard it's because a hard question too. Actually, um, it's a hard question because um, we we all have different types of you know ways of learning. The way I learn is, I do it and I repeat it. I do, I repeat, I do, and I repeat. If it looks weird to me, it's wrong. Because there's like, okay, there, there's anatomic, ana, anatomically correct. Anatomically and there's correct. like, uh-huh. ana, oh, God damn. I no, can't. it's fine. Continue, continue. You're French. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm French. Yeah, I'm ahead. not French. Yeah, you're Filipino. Yeah, but um, you speak French. Yeah, go ahead. There's like artistically correct, you know, for your eyes. You don't have to be precisely correct with the placement of the anatomy. As long as it looks good to you, that's good enough. Because in the end, you always trust your intuition with the art. Yes, of course, there are rules. You have to learn those first. But you don't have to perfect that. Just learn the general, general stuff. Of it. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Very true. Yeah. And then just go nuts with it. You know, you don't, there's no correct or wrong stuff. Yeah. Is that, is that it? That was a great answer. That was a great answer. Um, I will add this on because this is how I do it. So how do you, you know, you look at your art, you know something's wrong. You can't quite put your finger on it. I would say a lot of the times, I think that's very normal. So what happens is you're kind of always going to be chasing your eyes, at least for the most part as an artist. Your eyes, especially if you're constantly looking at other great artists, your eyes is going to be improving way faster than your hands can. So I would suggest that you ask somebody else because that's what I usually do. If I can't put my finger on it, I can just ask someone who's better than me. I, I'm lucky to have third. But if you don't have someone that you can ask or you know, you're reaching out to somebody and then I get it back to you, do what I do, which is when I don't feel like going to third, when I don't feel like you know, being a bitch, because <laughs> I I just open I open uh, a, a tab on my computer on my screen on my monitor and I open the Shonen Jump website and I look at what I consider to be the standard because at the end of the day I want to get to professional manga art standard that's my goal with my art I'm not really trying to go in galleries or nothing like that I'm just trying to be as good as the best of them right and so I open professionals and I ask myself how does my measure up obviously they've been doing it longer than you have to keep that in mind when you're asking yourself that question. And you kind of just don't have to compare because the thing is, you're never going to draw something and you're not going to think, oh, it's perfect, especially when you compare it to somebody who's a professional, right? And you, I kind of just look at my art and I look at theirs and I look at it for like a good 15 minutes. And the thing that was bothering me will start to show itself. Like, for example, hold on, Yusuke Murata's lines are a lot thinner than mine. Why are mine so chunky? You know what I mean? Or or the placement of these of this eye. Murata drew like the human face at a you know similar angle. His eye is up here. Why is mine all the way down here? You know what I mean? It might help when you do stuff like that, but it is a truly tricky one. And I simply suggest doing what third said or asking somebody else. And if you can't ask somebody else, then compare it with what you believe is the standard or what your goal is in terms of like skill. But yeah, that's what I see on that. That's a good answer. Like even better answer. What, what can I say? Heck? I'm just diddy perfect. But yeah, okay. Last question. And then <laughs> we can wrap it up because I know it's late where third is. Oh yeah. It's 5 a.m. Holy holy shit i'm sorry third i'm so sorry oh, good. but then again this is your fault you started recording late yeah but anyways i like to record <laughs> not gonna lie it, it's actually a good idea that we recorded so i can just rest tomorrow but yeah okay back to it what was the question again <laughs> uh the second question is uh, when you are studying a specific thing like anatomy form perspective etc is there a way to sort of know when you should have move on to more advanced stuff so you don't just stagnate and do the same things oh i have a good answer actually to this stuff but i'll let you hey first i can leech off you go ahead say first okay so <laughs> um when you say um when you're when you're done studying a specific thing like anatomy form perspective i think you don't ever stop learning that you always use that and when you move on to advanced stuff you don't stop learning the beginner stuff you use that permanently you never ever not use it so the question for me is don't forget what you learn that's 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 all i can say always use what you learn absolutely i was gonna say that but now that you already said what i was gonna say i will add on with this now, yes, you never stop learning form. You never stop learning the beginner stuff. But you know, you're know, you going to have to move on to learn the other stuff that you need to learn. And I guess to kind of tweak your question a little bit to more so, how do I know when it's time to move on? Because you never actually like stop learning form and like the basic stuff, like the, the you know, the fundamental stuff, you kind of want to keep learning it till you get more comfortable. Then I would say it's safe to move on. So for example, if you're doing form, you kind of need form to be able to draw the human body like well, you know, you draw form enough to where you feel like you're really comfortable with it. Then you can move on to anatomy and stuff like that. 
but it doesn't mean you're an expert at form, if that makes sense. I'm not making sense third, I might just say shit. No, actually, you make more sense than me because I think I just completely ignored the question. <laughs> Stop saying that third. You make me. You make me have to like. You're complimenting me, and I can't say thank you. No, without sounding like an I asshole. did. I, I didn't even answer the question. He asked like when. When. When was the? No, you did. You did. Okay, because I thought it was like when was the best time to you know to go to oh. the advanced stuff. Oh, I, okay. I do. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. But but you're still right though. You're still right. Like you don't fully learn it, but like you kind of want to get to a point where you're comfortable enough to move on to the next thing. So if you find yourself drawing the human body. You want to have at least a decent understanding of form. Now, for example, if you're drawing the human body in perspective and you're struggling, yeah, you go back to perspective, you know, and you do that until you feel comfortable enough and you come back to drawing the human body. And then like you find that you have enough perspective now to draw enough perspective knowledge to draw the human body from that angle. If that makes sense. Does that make sense? Then? Yep, that makes sense. Good answer. Yes, I like ladies, it. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, you might notice I'm getting I keep asking third for validation of my answers to make sure that they're not dumb. Um, nah. But yeah. I think that's you it. have to stop that. I need to stop that. I need to stop that. It'll be character growth if, like, twenty episodes down, I stop that. I'm curious to see. <laughs> but yeah, with that said, that is this episode of the Arcast Podcast, the third episode. I hope it still had the same energy that it did towards the start because now we are both tired. It is almost 12 p.m. here. 12 p.m. Hold on. No, it's almost 12 a.m. here. <laughs> it's almost tired. <laughs> yeah, it's almost 12 a.m. here. Exactly. I'm tired. And it's pretty much, um, is it past five there or is what? Yeah, the, the sun, I can see the sun. Yikes, dude. Yeah, so it's yeah. late over here. So we're going to call it for this episode. Hopefully you had fun. You heard us talk about some nonsense, maybe said some serious stuff. And hopefully you walked away learning something. But yeah, please feel free to like this video if it's on YouTube, if it's on Spotify. I don't know. Congratulations. Um, and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you like. We truly appreciate it. Uh, we are having fun with this podcast and we hope that it continues to do as well as it's been doing so far. At the time of us recording this, only one episode is out and that episode is doing way better than we thought. But yeah, any last words, third? Yeah, well, I just wanted to say thank you guys for holy like 400 subs in in a day, in so a day. that's that's really awesome yeah way so, more like, than we expected yeah can we get three likes for this episode guys if we Ooh. get three likes we're gonna do episode four yeah if we get three okay. likes we'll do an episode four and you know what's crazy okay. i will be in episode four that's crazy if we get oh, yeah, if we get yeah. three likes i'm gonna come back for episode four which is crazy Yo, me too me too me too oh, I think God, so. yeah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so but down. okay Till next time, our cast viewers, it has been I, Diddy Mark, and... Third PHP. And we will see you next time on the next episode of Free Therapy. I mean, the Arcast podcast. Goodbye, people. Bye. Bye. <laughs>